Hey guys, Greg here. Today let's solve number of one bits, lead code number 191. So we need to write a function that takes the binary representation of a positive integer and returns the number of set bits that it has, also known as the Hamming weight. Now a set bit is simply a bit in the binary representation that has a value of one. And I find this odd that it says the function takes the binary representation. The input is actually a decimal number. So it takes the number of 11. It would convert that into binary form, which is 1011. That has three many set bits and so we would return three. So let's say we are given a number like n is equal to 11 and this is a base 10 number not 1 1 in binary. Now in binary this would be 1 0 1 1 because it would be 2 to the 3 plus 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 0 which is equal to 8 plus 2 plus 1. So that is how you would get 11. You might be wondering why this is even a problem at all. Like can't you just make this a binary string and then bring an index through it and then just count? you would quickly see it's one, then two, then three, and you could return the answer of three. Well, you could totally do that, but that's just not the answer that the FANG companies are looking for. Now, I want you to try and figure out how you can use the AND operator in a clever way so that we can count the number of ones. So if n is equal to 11, what you would do is take n minus 1, which is 10. If you convert that to binary, it would just be 1, 0, 1, 0. So again, this would be 8, and this would be 2, so you get 10. Now if you add these two things together, you get 0, 1, 0, 1. Now notice that this has 1 less 1 than it did before. So 1, 0, 1, 1 turned into 1, 0, 1, 0. Basically what we did is we chopped off the final 1 there. So what you would do is have at the beginning an answer initialized to be 0, every time you do this ampersand, we're going to increase it by one. Then when you have this new number, which turns out to just be 10, in binary we have 1010. Zero, one, zero. What we're going to do is now take n minus one, which would be nine now, so 10 minus one is nine. We're going to do a logical bitwise and with nine in binary, which is represented by 1001. Zero, zero, one. So again, it's eight and one, which makes nine. If you ampersand this together, you end up with zero, 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 0001. So notice what what happened is we chopped off the least significant one again. We chopped that off, meaning we have another one, and so we're going to increment this again to be two. So then we take whatever number this is, which we interpret as the number of eight. Okay, so then we ampersand this with seven. Seven in binary would be zero, one, 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 because it is four plus two plus one, which is equal to seven. So then if we logical and these two things together, we again will chop off that last one here because it will be zero, zero, 0, 0, and 0. We increment here and see that our final answer is 3. So basically what we keep doing is just setting n is equal to n bitwise and with n minus 1. We do that until we hit 0. So every time we do this, we chop off a 1 and we would increment our count to go up by 1. Now the reason they prefer this solution is let's say we had a long binary string like this. I don't really know what number this actually represents in decimal, but let's say that this was the binary representation. If it was, then the brute force would be to iterate over every position and then we would just calculate whenever we had a one we would increment our count. However this and method of doing this it actually ignores this as kind of a string. It just does a bitwise operation and it does that only for the actual number of ones that we have. So we would only do this twice. So it's basically the difference of looking at the whole string and looking at the number of ones in it. Technically they have the same worst case as of course you could have every single thing as a one. However, that's extremely unlikely, and in the case where you have tons and tons of zeros, this ampersand method is much faster. So the time complexity of this bitwise and solution is going to be big O of the number of ones, so I'll just say big O of number of ones, and the space complexity of that is going to be completely constant. We won't need to store anything for that. We'll just set our answer to be zero for now, and then while n is not equal to zero, we're just going to answer plus equals one, so we add one more to our count, and we just set n equal equal to n and, so bitwise and, with n minus one. And ultimately we just return our answer. It's extremely easy code, but not so easy to come up with. Now importantly, this has a time complexity of big O of the number of one bits that are in the string. Now this is in the worst case, just the number of bits that you have, but it's usually a lot faster than that. And the space complexity is going to just be constant. Okay guys, check out algomap.io in the description if you haven't already and have a great day guys, bye-bye.